A portion of this video is brought to you by AG1. We have 24 hours to ride the last manually operated cable cars and the oldest streetcars in the world. They're both here in America. I'm Mike, and welcome to Downey. No, no, it's a casual version. Casual. We're just gonna we're just gonna hang out. So we're starting in San Francisco to ride the world famous cable cars. So let's go ride this thing. They're in such good shape. Interior looks great, you know, for those rainy San Francisco days. But of course, you can hang out the side. There were 23 cable car lines established between 1873 and 1890, and yet only three remain. The San Francisco cable car is the last manually operated cable car system in the world. And when I say manually operated, I mean, the operators are manually pulling levers to connect and disconnect their cars from the cable underground. Here we go, my first ever cable car ride. So as you need to do in San Francisco, we're leaving the Fisherman's Wharf. And we are headed up the hill to Lombard Street. You're allowed to stand on the platform. You're allowed to stand out here, this is wild. It's like a very slow, scenic roller coaster ride. The only thing electric on them are the batteries on board to power the lights. <laughs> we can look back and that's Alcatraz. So, how do they work? We all know the streets of San Francisco are steep, like really steep. And the only way you could get a streetcar up these hills with their steel wheels and steel tracks is to pull them up by cable. Hence, the cable car. The cable is constantly running underneath the street. In fact, you can hear it when you're just standing out here. But what about brakes? Because steel wheels on a steel track are slippery, let alone while going downhill on a wet day. And so for that, they have an additional braking system which applies a large brake to the track itself. So, you know, these don't go careening out of control. Now, the cable cars don't operate on a loop, but more of a there and back type line. So how do they turn around? Well, manually, of course. Look at that, they physically turn it still. They just push it off. Well, the reason they have to push it off is because it's not yet connected to the cable. I know I've come all the way to San Francisco just to ride these cable cars. But can you blame me? They're iconic. In fact, they're so unique and important that they were designated as a National Historic Landmark 60 years ago. But of course, they're part of the integrated transit system here in San Francisco, which means it'll actually take you to tourist destinations like Lombard Street. This is our stop, Lombard Street. You may recognize it as, as the zigzag street, the steepest street. Obviously, I took the cable car up so we can walk down. So it's the zigzaggy road down. But not only that, look at, the, look at the little driveways you have if you're a house here. What a beautiful road. Of course, it comes with stairs for us pedestrians. I think the only thing that could possibly be more San Francisco than the cable cars is a tie-dye Volkswagen bus going down Lombard Street. <laughs> and so in order to pay for this whole trip, I'd really like to thank the sponsor of today's video, AG1. It also just happens to be very helpful for me while I'm traveling because it comes with 75 natural ingredients like superfoods, vitamins, minerals, and adaptogens. And the reason that's so helpful for me is because it's hard for me to make sure I'm getting the nutrients I need while I'm traveling. And so drinking AG1 in the morning ensures I get what my body needs and they come with these great travel packs which makes it super easy. AG1 is more than a greens powder with natural energy supporting ingredients like vitamin B12, and performance and recovery support with magnesium and superfoods. It's an easy daily habit. Eight ounces of water, one scoop of AG1, shake and enjoy. And considering how many healthy ingredients are in it, I find it surprisingly tasty. If you wanna try AG1 for yourself, go to athleticgreens.com slash downylive and you'll get a year supply of vitamin D3 and K2, plus five free travel packs. Now let's get on to the travel. Now to get a better idea of how the whole system works, Let's get off up here. Thank you. You're welcome. Have fun, everyone. The cable cars would be nothing without this building, the powerhouse, and the cable car museum. Obviously, you can learn about the whole history, but what I'm really here for is the actual powerhouse. These huge engines and windy wheels keep the cables moving, which pull the cable cars along the streets. 
I mean, think about it for a second. The cables are constantly running under the streets, while the cable car has a mechanism called a grip, which reaches down and grabs onto the cable below the road. I just find it fascinating that we see the actual cables under each of these streets being run from here. They also have a couple examples of some of the oldest cable cars, but I'd rather ride the ones outside. Well, let's head underground to see what it actually looks like. No way. And this is how they direct it around the city. Because that's the question, isn't it? How do you get these cables around corners? It's a whole system of pulleys and wheels down here to guide the cables where they need to go. This is wild infrastructure. Now this is a map that shows how the network of cables and wheels are intertwined and go around corners. But the most important question is how do they cross each other? So the uphill cable goes over top so they can keep going up which means the downhill cable car has to disconnect from the cable and use its momentum to roll across the perpendicular tracks and cable. But the cable cars aren't the only piece of historic transit in San Francisco. You see, the San Francisco Municipal Railway also operates the F Market and Wharves Heritage Streetcar lines. We missed one, but another's coming. Now this series is just meant to be fun, a casual ride along as we explore some of the most interesting transit that still exists in America. This is not a deep dive or a political debate about what's better, buses, streetcars, etc. Let's just have fun. Despite being heritage streetcars, these beauties run 20 hours a day, seven days a week. Now that's pretty good service, especially for a historic streetcar. The vehicles are restored 1930s streetcars from San Francisco and some other cities. In fact, the cars are painted in different liveries representing those different cities. I mean, you have to admit, having streetcars in their historic... <laughs> he said pictures are five dollars. You have to admit, having streetcars in their historic liveries is so much nicer in a city than just a fleet of buses. They look great. Plus, they're a pretty efficient way of getting people around a big city, but, you know, that aside. They're kept in fantastic condition and while they maybe aren't as fun to ride as the cable cars, it's still pretty special that a city maintains and operates them in this condition daily. Thank you. The vintage streetcars of San Francisco are amazing, but they're not the oldest. For that, we have to go to New Orleans. So we're going to the airport. To get to the airport, we have to catch the BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit. And what I like most about it is it looks like it's straight out of the 80s. Does it not look like some futuristic sci-fi transit? I'm like in an apocalyptic movie right now. The San Francisco views before we go. Wow. I said I felt like this train was straight out of the 80s. It turns out it's straight out of 1972. So it would have looked super futuristic when it came out. What do you think about it that way? Pretty great. It's looking good for 50 too. Now, I'm not trying to say that the BART is a perfect system by any means, but there's one that's pretty darn close just upstairs. The air train. Now, I didn't come all this way to ride the SFO air train, but that's kind of the fun part about this series. It has all sorts of little side adventures and transit like this that we get to ride. New Orleans, here we come. I mean, it's not much, it's an airport shuttle train, but it's called the air train. It's got windows for days. Look at this, doing its job. So moving on from autonomous shuttle trains, let's get ourselves to New Orleans to ride the oldest streetcar in the world. Couldn't get me to my hotel because the road's blocked. Seems to be some sort of event going on. But here we are in New Orleans in the French Quarter. I think we'll ride the streetcar in the morning. It's busy. Is it? Is it Mardi Gras? It might be Mardi Gras. Lucky for us, we're in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. I didn't know it was Mardi Gras. This is just one of the added benefits of travel. I mean, you never know what you'll find.
still there? It's the next morning and the street cleaners are out cleaning up the remnants of last night. We're gonna go see the street cars, but there's one more stop we have to make first. Now, we need a quick breakfast, and in New Orleans, there's one place you have to go to. It's the famous Cafe du Monde. We're getting beignets. Wow, thank you so much. I know we came to ride the streetcar, and we will. But while traveling, it's important to take it all in. Look at that. Crispy donut. Beignet, baby. And I will be taking in all of these beignets. Mmm! This city has such a positive energy to it, even at 9 a.m. All right, now it's time for what we came for. I'm now covered in powdered sugar, but uh, we're starting here at French Market. So we're first riding the Riverfront streetcar. Look at these beauties. As you can see, these streetcars look a little bit older than what we just rode in San Francisco. However, what you'll be surprised to hear is that these were actually built by the New Orleans Regional Transit Authority in the 1990s as replicas of historic streetcars. Pretty tricky, New Orleans. A day pass, $3. There we go. Honestly, I could not tell the difference, and I would have never guessed that these are actually pretty modern. However, we're not here to see these replica streetcars. Now, this streetcar is nice. In fact, it's beautiful. I think they nailed it with the red and yellow colors as well. But this isn't the one we've come to see. Stop Running since 1835, the St. Charles streetcar line is the oldest continuously operating streetcar line in the world. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, we're gonna get it. <laughs> and it's not just a tourist line either, this is the busiest route in the New Orleans Regional Transit Authority, used by local commuters and tourists alike. Thank you. Beautiful. The woodwork on this is phenomenal. So this line has been operating since 1835. That's 188 years. Also, interestingly enough, along with the San Francisco cable car system, this is the only other streetcar line listed as a national historic landmark. And I know it's Mardi Gras, but it's a full house in here. Everybody wants to ride them. The route is 13 miles long and runs 24 hours a day. All right, what a ride. I mean, how can you not like streetcars? They're fantastic. Especially when they run down a greenway like this. You're avoiding traffic. Ah, what a day. The St. Charles Line started in 1835 with steam-powered trains and mule-drawn cars. And of course, it is the world's oldest operating streetcar line. This is part two of five of this very casual transit series, but I'm starting to discover it's not just about the historic streetcars. It's about discovering what else makes the city special along the way. And so next week, when we go to ride America's most interesting aerial trams, we also ride in a hot air balloon and go through an outdoor airport. It's important to enjoy the big things in life, but sometimes the small things too. Wow. It's pristine. Like little pods, little elevators, and these little guys. Yeah, these little guys. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me.